Lila. Lila. I know you're there, Lila. You can't do this. Leaving isn't going to solve anything. Kyla, I can't stay Not here. Listen to me. Wherever you go, you're going to have trouble. And they're going to start asking you questions you can't answer. Maybe. They'll believe what they want to believe. Kyle, don't worry about me. No. I'm not going to let you go. Not now. Problem here, folks. Oh, Dr. Adler. Miss Nolan. Hello, George. Uh, we're just having a chat here. It's no problem. Good morning. Oh, thank goodness. Hi, Lila. Hi, Justin. How's my patient today, Mrs. Haynes? He's doing just fine, Lila. Aren't you, Daddy? He, uh, he seems a little weaker than he was yesterday. You're my boyfriend, aren't you, Mr. Gibbs? Well, if he doesn't care about that, he's already dead. Justin, if you're going to work today, I'll ride downtown with you. But hurry. I don't want to be late. We're on our way, Mother. See you, Lila. Bye. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right, Mr. Gibbs. You won't feel a thing. Oh. Lila. What's, what's this all about? I called your room and Phoebe Dixon said that you'd moved out and were planning to leave. I told her she was mistaken, that you just came back to town. I hope these tears aren't for Horace Gibbs. He was my patient. And he died. But that's not your fault. He was my patient too, but I'm not crying. And I knew the old coot since he was a middle-aged coot. I gave him his medication. He fell asleep. I went out to get some sun. And when I came back... I'm sorry. I should have warned you straight out that Horace had more things wrong with him than any ten patients in the county hospital. But... I don't know. There might have been something I could have done. Look, I... I know it's not politically correct to say so, but... Horace died of old age. Lila, there's no use running away when there's a need for good nurses right here in Cabot Cove. Uh, must be patient. I've got to get to a telephone. Thank you, Dr. Haslett. You're making the right decision. will be thanks enough. Yeah, go get it. That's been taken care of, too. Lila? Lila Nolan? It's nice to see you again, Mrs. Fletcher. I persuaded Lila to be Maggie's round-the-clock nurse. Here you go. I appreciate you coming in, Miss Nolan. Now, please understand this is merely informational. There's no evidence of a crime having been committed, but there has been a complaint. And it's necessary for me to ask a few questions to clear it up. I understand. How long have you been in Cabot Cove? I was born here. I thought you were from Boston. I went to nursing school in Boston, thanks to Dr. Hazlitt. You see, Lila, when she was a little girl, used to bring home wounded birds and small animals and take care of them. And her family wasn't very well off, so Dr. Hazlitt started a college fund for her. Boston's a great place for a nursing career. Why did you come back to Cabot Cove? There was a situation. Basically, I was homesick. And Horace Gibbs was your first patient as a visiting nurse. 
How'd you get that job? Dr. Hazlitt recommended me. Lana, did the medicine that you gave Mr. Gibbs come from Dr. Hazlitt? Yes, ma'am. Miss Nolan, Mrs. Haynes says her father's gold watch and couplings were missing from his bureau after he died. You know anything about that? Are you asking me if I stole those things? I have to. Sheriff, what kind of a person would kill another human being for a handful of trinkets? <clears throat> well, that's a better question than I ask. Thanks for coming in, Miss Nolan. You can go back to your patient now. Mort, I'm amazed that Serena Haynes could believe that nice young woman would intentionally cause her father's death. Will you stop fussing with it? Hold still. I've changed my mind. I don't, I don't want my hair done. Every woman likes to look attractive. Yeah, after two weeks in bed, I can imagine what I look like. Not now. I swear you look ten years younger. Oh. See for yourself. You! Damn you! Last thing I wanted in the world was to feel sorry for myself. Only meant to cheer you up. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, thank you. I found the vase in the pantry. Oh, do you know, Dory gave me that one Mother's Day. <laughs> Not being her mother, I was especially touched. <laughs> and then Eddie, when he found out that she'd given it to me, he decided to give me something from his woodworking class. It turned out to be a necktie rack. <laughs> Keep it under your hat, but I'm buying Dory a piano. What a grand present. <laughs> Uh, Lila, if you'd put those flowers over there on the dresser, I could see them better. I'll make some room. Jessica, listen up. I want to tell you something. I'm oh, sorry. Can I help you? No. Thank you. I'm just having a klutzy day. Uh, Jessica, guess what I have a craving for right now. You'll have to give me a hint. You and I pigged out on it. We ate a whole one all by ourselves. A whole one all to ourselves? Just the two of us? <laughs> well, that can only have been your grandmother's applesauce cake. Well, do you remember where I kept the recipe? Mm-hmm. I haven't made one for years, but if that's what you want, I'll have another go at it. Here's your pill, Mrs. Saunders. Seth, is she all right? I'm sorry, Jess. Maggie's dead. Oh. Morning, Lila. Did they at least give you a decent breakfast? Andy brought me some scrambled eggs and toast over from the diner. It looked good, but I couldn't eat. Yeah, Andy, I'll take over here. Keep chin up, Lala. Thanks for everything. You feel like talking this morning? Tell him what you told me, Lila. What happened last night? Lila said she was wakened out of a sound sleep. I don't want you to tell me what she told you. I want her to tell me. Please. I went to bed early after a rough day. Mrs. Saunders was edgy and out of sorts. As soon as I crawled into bed, I was wiped out. I don't know how long I'd been asleep before... I heard something in Mrs. Saunders' room. What kind of something? A man's voice. I couldn't make sense of what it was saying. Something about how Mrs. Saunders deserved a better place. Well, what did she say? I didn't hear her say anything. And then when the man stopped talking, I got up to go and check on her. She was alone, and I, I, I took her pulse. She didn't have one. The fellow who was talking to her did her in, and then he searched her room, probably looking for jewelry. No, Mrs. Saunders' niece said that nothing she knew of was missing. When we entered the room, you were standing there holding the hypodermic needle. I saw it on the floor, and I picked it up. Well, the state police lab said it contained strychnine, and the only prints on it were your prints. What about the rest of the room? Yours, Mrs. F's, Dory Saunders. I didn't kill her. What about the others? I didn't kill any of them. Look, Lila, I've seen the reports. In every case, you were alone with the patient. Now, hold on, Mort. In every case, those other patients were already dying. 
Maggie was recovering. How do you explain that? It isn't bad enough you're going to answer the question. Now you're going to ask them as well? They were all very old, like Mr. Gibbs. And in terrible pain. Now, wait a minute. If this is going to be a confession of mercy killings, I want to get somebody in here to write it down so you can sign it. I I'm not confessing. I couldn't take away somebody's life, no matter how little of it was left. Sound like me? What, why do they have to sound like me? That's him. That's the voice I heard in Mrs. Saunders' room the night she was murdered. Hey, wait a, wait a minute. She's the one you arrested for the murder. Yeah, based on her alleged connection to other mercy killings. But her ex-boyfriend is Dr. Kyle Adderley. He was picked up by the Boston PD a little while ago. And he swore she had nothing to do with him. He'd led Lila to believe that she'd be considered his accomplice. All right. All right. The truth. Somebody offered me a part ownership of a first-class retirement home. If I would just... I mean, figuring I knew a lot of wealthy seniors at the country club. <laughs> this, uh, there's somebody who offered you part ownership. Does he have a name? Jason Giles. What difference does it make? She was dead. When you got there, if that's the truth. Maybe he got there first. What's in that thing? Filament. The same lethal dose I used on the others. What? What are you doing in my house? I followed her. I saw her trying to break in. Would you please call an ambulance? And hurry. This woman's poisoned me. You didn't follow her here, Justin. You came here to kill me. Now, it seemed very odd then, but what I realized now was that she was really saying, look in my kitchen cooking files, where I found the trust agreement and her checkbook. Sir, sure. <laughs> None of that has anything to do with me. None of this. Dr. Haslick, please, I beg of you, do something. This woman has poisoned me. Maggie wrote a check for over $15,000 to buy Dory a piano. It came as a real shock to her when that check bounced. She must have started looking into her back balances. She discovered the discrepancies and called you on them. Face it, Mr. Haynes, this syringe is the only evidence we're really going to need. All right, all right, all right. I, it was too late to cover up what I'd done. I had to kill her. Well, it's a good thing that I kept my promise to Maggie to bake it. Because along with the recipe and the deposit slips, I found the deed to this house as well as her will. Being of sound mind, etc., I leave my house and my estate to my niece Dory and my nephew Edward. 